All right, here we go. Salute to Knicks Nation, CP the Franchise here. And I got a big announcement for you guys. We want to welcome BetUS as the official sportsbook sponsor of Knicks Fan TV. BetUS is the leading online sportsbook that offers a wide range of sports betting and casino games. It's reliable, it's secure, and they offer excellent customer service. They have a number of options to choose from between pregame betting, live betting, parlays, and prop bets. Now, for the Knicks, there's a couple of options that you can bet on right now before the season starts. How about the in-season tournament odds? Right now, the Knicks are a plus 2,000 to win the in-season tournament. They're also a plus 800 to win the Atlantic Division. What do you think? Even though the Celtics got better, Philadelphia coming back into the pack, Knicks are at a plus 800. Can the Knicks win the East? Well, if you think so, put your money where your mouth is. The Knicks are currently at a plus 1600 on BetUS's sportsbook to win the Eastern Conference. And lastly, can they take home the gold? The Knicks going into this season as a plus 5000 to raise the Larry O'Brien Trophy at the end of the season to be the champs the world champs, or the national champs, but the champs, what do you think? Use our promo code today to sign up and get a bonus match of 125%. It is a great deal. Shout out to BetUS, once again, the official sportsbook sponsor of Knicks Fan TV. But as we saw in that playoff matchup against the Heat, as they started to key in on him and completely disregarding the Knicks shooters... That's where things kind of got a little bit dicey. And as Tom Thibodeau has mentioned in this his training camp presser, three-point accuracy is something that the team wants to improve upon. They were top 10 in the league in in makes and and attempts last year, 24th in accuracy. And even though the starting five has had some success, what do you think about, you know, the most optimal lineups to ensure that that we have some snipers out there? I'm sure DiVincenzo will help, but how do you see them kind of navigating the rotations to make sure that we have adequate shooting out there when Brunson's uh, operating? Yeah, so I I think it's going to be an issue no matter what. Mm. And the reason why is because as much as Mr. Robinson helps you in so many other aspects of the game, he's just there clogging up the lane. Like I, I, I have asked people who work in analytics to if they can get me this stat. Like working analytics for teams, and, and no one's really done it. I think they can get it, but it would take really long. And it's I, I want to know what percentage of the time that Mitchell Robinson is on the court when he's on offense that he spends with at least one foot in the paint. Yeah, yeah. And and I want to know where that ranks in the league because I'll bet that he is number one in the league. Mm. And the reason why is not just because Mitch isn't like doing stuff with the ball away from the rim and he's there for lobs and he's there for putbacks and all of that. It's because they really go out of their way to weaponize him as an offensive rebounder. Part of the reason, like he's a great offensive rebounder on his own. Obviously he's Mm, probably the best in the Eastern conference. Like him and Steven Adams are probably the two best offensive rebounders in the league. However, the Knicks, I shouldn't say however, I should say so. So the Knicks mm-hmm. lean all the way into it. And that means keeping him around the rim mm. a lot, which also means clogging up driving lanes. Right. So I, I think just with him there, there's going to be a, a, you know, there's going to be a lack of spacing. And then you add on the fact that like Julius will take them and can make them, but he just barely doesn't make enough for to make people stick to him under yeah. all circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. And Brunson is so good that defenses will lose their minds and just be like i'm 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 getting the hell away from this dude like i i'm leaving brunson be, i'm leaving brandall because i can't let brunson beat us there's no way uh same thing with rj so i could i could see them playing around with lineups where rj plays less and divincenzo is there uh, I could I could see them playing around with lineups where maybe RJ is the four. I know we all have like Josh Hart written in as the four, but I don't know what position Josh Hart plays because he's not a stretch. Yeah, four. you're right. Like right, right. physically, he's a small four, but it's not like he's he's because he's small. He's going to be shooting threes like he's not. He's not PJ Tucker. Yeah, in the corners. Yeah. You know, and he doesn't even really want to shoot threes like that's not 
his game. He wants to be cutting. He wants to be setting screens and rolling. He wants to be getting out in transition. Like he doesn't really want to shoot threes. Mm-hmm. You know, that was a huge thing for him in Portland that he became really hesitant mm-hmm. to shoot yeah, threes yeah, yeah. during his time in Portland. And we even saw that at times during the playoffs. Absolutely. When the shot wasn't falling. He was he was just hesitant to put up threes. He for as aggressive of a player he is. It's gone. It's kind of weird. Yeah. It's kind of weird to see because he's yeah. an insanely aggressive player in literally every other way. Yeah. And then in that one, he's like really hesitant. Yeah. And it, it, it's it's a weird it's a weird thing for a dude who's like so confident in his game and who's who's obviously a good player. Uh, but but I I could see them. Here's the thing. They have nine guys in their rotation, and they're all good. So I could see Tibbs just rolling with whoever's good on that night to close games. Yeah. And I could see a I could see them having like a ridiculous amount of closing lineup combinations. I have a feeling that they're not just going to like run out the starting lineup to close just because of it. Yeah, I don't see it. Uh yeah, I mean I think if RJ's not playing well or if RJ's getting hurt on defense, I think we're going to see Hart there or we're going to see you know, we're going to see DiVincenzo there or we're going to see Quickly there or something. Uh, I, I think if Grimes isn't hitting his threes or if, you know, maybe Grimes is struggling against a really good defender, we're going to see Hart come out there and, mm-hmm. and take him on. I think I think whoever steps up amongst that trio of wings and guards there, I think whoever steps up as the best wing defender amongst them or perimeter defender, I should say, amongst them is the one who is going to most consistently close because they all do kind of different stuff. Yeah. And they're all. They're all good to very good players. And I I just, I think what's going to be huge for them is ball pressure. They need someone Mm -hmm. who's going to stop dudes on the perimeter. That's going to be a big thing for their defense. And if somebody emerges as that dude, I could see Tibbs sticking with that guy because it'll help their defense a lot.